History of MMM, how it all began. Starting up of MMM, in 1989, Moscow Executive Committee in Leninsky District registered MMM as a cooperative society. It is in Russia. A few words about the leader. The MMM Cooperative Society was founded by Sergei Mavrodi and was one of the leading computer equipment distributors in Russia. Sergei Mavrodi, having a degree in maths, worked as a programmer and took part in the development of the first operating systems. A few words about his decision to make his own company is the fact that having worked as a simple worker from 8 to 5, he understood that freedom is the most important for him because that work of 8 to 5 is literally a slavery. At any point, at any time, the company can throw you out and you'll be left without nothing, although you could have worked in that company for years and years. So he realized it. This is why he decided to create his own child and he knew whatever his efforts will be, it will, be it will come back to him in form of dividends and income. Free of charge travel campaign. In 1992, the brand became universally recognizable after Mavrodi offered several times to all the residents of Moscow a day of free of charge travel in Metro, Moscow subway. Pretty smart. Birthday of MMM. On October 20, 1992, the joint stock company MMM was registered. In fact, it is a birthday of MMM in the traditional form in which people got used to consider it. The shares of MMM on sale. February 1st, 1994, the shares of MMM went on sale and people immediately began to buy them. Moreover, the company willingly bought them back on a new, higher rate, which grew very fast at about 100% per month. The company's principle today is always more expensive than yesterday, worked perfectly. Few words about that. Why did he do that? As you might know, in 1991, the Soviet Union fell. So if until at, at the time of the Soviet Union, everything that there was in the country, like um, properties, um, different companies or whatever that was bringing some goods, was national. So any person of the country was entitled to have a part, a share of that production, of that company. Um, everybody, were, um, everybody was equal, but when the Soviet Union fell, what it meant is that all the companies, all the properties had to be privatized. So you can imagine there is a company, a huge company. People worked there for years and years and at one moment there comes a person and says, all that is mine. Yes, this was the case and obviously that information, that laws about the fact that it was um, possible to privatize was kept only for a small group of people for obvious reasons. So a simple worker who worked in that company for years and years or all his life didn't know he can actually come and say by law that that is his. So what a uh, genius idea Sergei Mavrodi had is to sell these shares to gather the money of the people and with this money to buy those companies. So basically, if a person has an MMM share, he would have had uh, an exact share from the company that Sergei Mavrodi bought, for example, a company from oil and gas or something else. Obviously, he knew perfectly which companies are worth it and which companies were not. There was quite a battle there. Um, so as you can see, his idea was great, but let's see what happens. Government is trying to hinder MMM's activities. Surprise, surprise! Planned by the Russian government, MMM 94 was intentionally collapsed. It began when tax inspectors accompanied by OMON officers passed through the crowd of depositors and went inside the central office of the company to give a notice about the planned tax inspection. Right. So. Obviously, the small group of people that I was talking about is the government people, is the people that have connections and so on, and they wanted obviously all that money, all those properties to be kept in their hands. This is how the nowadays oligarchs um, were, were made. At that moment they had nothing, in one day they got loads of money, and now you can know them as very rich people who made their money on the back of a nation. 
so obviously they did something just to to provoke um, some panic going through the crowd obviously the for any financial institution a panic is really bad as I remind you at that time MMM was selling shares was a share stock company let's say Mavrodi's arrest Sergei Mavrodi was arrested on tax evasion charge really lame excuse it wasn't at all like that what happened even the person that was in charge with giving the arrest um, he told him that there was no other option for them they had to do something even though it was illegal what they were doing but they had to do it as they were afraid of him because as he said another two three months and in whole Russia there would be no government no banks nobody only Sergei Mavrodi you know that who holds the money nowadays this is in charge so he was arrested and his arrest was broadcasted live on all TV channels obviously to show off more to show people how bad he is and actually the government didn't do anything wrong on the same day there was a storm of a central office of MMM the company was prescribed to recover 49.9 billion rubles to the budget huge money the question about the mind me um, in MMM 94 is open as no one still can give an answer where it is. The authorities simply turned a blind eye to it, although hundreds of eyewitnesses are ready to confirm, even under Worth in court, that they saw 17 trucks, 17 trucks take out cash through the back door. So unfortunately, at that time, there was no internet, no uh, way, no bitcoins, no other internet wallets, and all the money were obviously kept in cash in the MMM offices. And uh, the government took uh, advantage of it. They just came, took it out, and then they said nothing. They just, moreover, they didn't say where the money went. They even made the way to make people believe that Sergei Mavrodi was the one who took all those 17 trucks of money and disappeared. Um, but obviously it wasn't the case. It was a simply lame excuse. Demonstrations against state authorities, August, August 1994. Thousands of MMM depositors affected by the artificial collapse of the pyramid protested and demanded to set Mavrodi free. Actually, Mavrodi could have used his powers and do huge, bigger protests, but he decided not to do that as that would made as obvious a different protests of this type uh, could be people injured or uh, even killed so he decided not to use people in this purpose it was very noble from him to do that and my leader became a deputy however he found a way to get out of the prison being imprisoned Sergei Mavrodi had managed to register as a candidate for a deputy of the state Duma and was released from prison he won the elections by a landslide and became the deputy of the state Duma of the first convocation so as a deputy in in Russia they have privileges this is why becoming a deputy he was set free the state Duma is against Mavrodi Surprise, surprise! The State Duma deputies deprived Sergei Mavrodi of his deputy plenary powers due to his permanent absence at the Duma's meetings. That incident was the only one in New Russia's history. Sergei Mavrodi wasn't interested at all in politics. It's not he hates politics, as he said it many times. Um, so he became a deputy only for the reason to get out of a prison that's it he wasn't interested to go to at their meetings as he himself considered as well the people there as being quite silly and not worthy to spend time with but uh, this was another lame excuse for them to um, deprive him by saying that he is absent a candidate for presidency. The Central Election Commission registered the authorized representatives of the initiative group that had nominated Mavrodi as a candidate for the president of Russia, but subsequently rejected a significant part of the signatures in the support of a candidate and his registration was renounced. So for obvious reasons, they did that again. They weren't interested in to having a fair president, a fair leader on top of their head. Revival of MMM, January 2011. Sergei Mavrodi renounced launching a new 
announced sorry, launching a new project of MMM 2011, Together We Change the World. Previously, there were simply no analogues of similar systems in the world. The film about MMM, the launch of a project fell in the same time interval with the release of Russian film about MMM Pyramid, the plot of which is based on the eponymous book in which the history of MMM is disclosed by Sergei Mavrodi. So he wrote a book and there is a movie which I highly recommend you to watch. You can find it online on YouTube. MMM is building a new, fair financial order. June 2012, the activity of MMM made a lot of banks collapse and a huge outflow of funds from deposit accounts happened. The system numbered more than 35 million numbers at the members at the time. For obvious reasons, the fight against the system started. It suffered the same fate as MMM 94, eventually collapsed. So what happened, a lot of banks, as I already said, had a huge outflow and they another minus of the system of that time was that it wasn't really quite a community because the money was still kept uh, by the managers in MMM so it wasn't the same idea as it is now comparing it now where people exchange money between themselves you don't need to put it in a central account at that time there were central accounts and it was again used by the banks they simply blocked those accounts that they identified as being of MMM and took all the money away and that's it, there were no other discussion about that again, huge loss of money, people lost a lot of money uh, Sergei Mavrodi didn't get all of them, it was again the banks that took the advantage of it MMM 2012 is just the beginning I'll be back Sergei Mavrodi announced the launch of a completely new MMM, World Mutual Aid Fund, MMM community. It speeded up since the first day, showing crazy dynamics on new members' registration. It has been decided to send 10% of a whole turnover on payments to the affected members of MMM 2011. So again, another genius idea, in order not to make central accounts, in order not to gather the money somewhere, now the money are spread directly between participant itself. You can just check in your account online whom you should transfer the money to. So MMM now is connecting all the people between themselves in exchange so they that it can exchange the money and get benefits of it. Uh, it's amazing and it's crazy but it is true. MMM is growing. Some Short facts, 2012 MMM started its development in India, it had great huge developments. 2012-2013 following India, MMM Bangladesh was launched as well. 2013 MMM Indonesia was launched, 2014 MMM Hong Kong and it's not the end. MMM Global 2014 MMM Global started up in the spring 2014. It is a voluntary network, a community of millions and millions of people from more than 100 countries worldwide. So there is already MMM settled in Argentina, Brazil, Philippines, Hong Kong and other. And all the rest of people in the world from all the countries of the world are able to participate as well. So they rebelled against the financial slavery and combined their money for this purpose. So how it is possible? MMM, the Republic of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is another genius idea to set the world free. For MMM Global participants' convenience, there were some trendy ideas on funds transfers implemented. From now on, all the countries where you can buy and sell Bitcoins can be registered in a branch of free people of the Republic of Bitcoin. Thus, there is no barriers to develop MMM in small countries due to their restrictions on the international bank transfers. Banks. This is not something that we would want to use, as the banks can any time uh, put restriction on an account or even block an account and take all the money. Yes, the banks can do that. Read better your contract. So, Bitcoins is really genius idea to do that. Um, join MMM Global, join our community, set the world free, um, don't hesitate, don't even think of going back, just go always forward. We are writing the history right here and right now. 
we are not going to be any more slaves working from eight to five having pennies for that we want to have hold our own money and to get the benefits of it i don't want a bank to use my money for their own purposes i want us people free people to use our money to exchange the money when it is needed and to help each other this is really a great idea and join us write the history here today with us and together we will indeed change the world.